Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. A friend of mine is a local contractor and asked me to create version two of his rolling toolbox, right? Or his, his contractor trailer. He's a, he's a lifelong contractor, always works on site, and has always had a box trailer uh, pulled behind his truck with his tools. So there's a lot of design inspiration out there on the internet. One that I want to point out specifically is Ron Polk, the awesome rolling toolbox is his design of a rolling trailer and I point that out specifically because my friend got the idea to use these viewtainers which is this rack back here uh, from Ron so it's worth giving him credit that uh, he's, he's inspiring a lot of people to make some really awesome tooling setups for people on the go uh, if you're interested Ron Polk does have a set of plans for his specific design and his specific trailer this is not for that specific size trailer. It's quite different. As a matter of fact, let me hide everything and I'll show you the trailer itself. It's, this is the top down view. This is a, whoops, there's the top down view. This is a horse trailer. And some of you might be thinking, why in the world make a horse trailer into a rolling toolbox? And the answer to that is because he's got one and because he wants to. So this is the design we're starting with. This is the, the canvas, this is the footprint. Up here is a tack room in the front, and there's a door to this side. This is kind of a small space, not really too, uh, there's not really much that can be greatly uh, uh, designed for it uh, because he's going to be using it kind of like a break room. He's gonna put a plug-in cooler, have a, a microwave, and, and stuff, to keep the peop stuff to keep his people on the job rather than uh, driving off, wasting time, trying to find something to eat. So in here, is the main storage area and back up to this top left area is another door so we don't need to we need to keep this open so we don't block this this and this are two studs in the wall that were for uh, aluminum doors or, or walls i should say right here to separate different horses and those walls have been removed but those studs are still there so we have to design around those we also have uh, two swing out doors down here to work with and we've designated this area in front right here. You see this, this horizontal bar. We've designated this as do not add area because uh, he wants to put like ladders in the backside here, possibly. Uh, we're just not adding anything right here. So the design canvas is all of this space in here. And we took this, we took these measurements one morning. He, he pulled into my driveway and five hours later, uh, we ended up with this wireframe model. So we had the trailer to work with as far as dimensioning stuff out. We had a whole list of notes to work with as far as his specific tools, his specific needs. Let me walk you through our design. And you'll notice this design is just a wireframe. There's no thickness to any of this. And when you're trying to, when I'm trying to work out a hash out a design with somebody else, there's no need in spending the time to to get so specific with joinery and all the little details that will actually be in real life. All we need is the major dimensions and make sure that stuff fits. And if that's the case, all we need for that is a wireframe model. So in here, uh, with the doors open, this is a long horizontal slot here that is, I think, 52 inches off the ground. And that is 50 inches off the ground for larger plywood offcuts from jobs that he can keep on hand for just random tasks. If, if the job that he's working on requires 10 sheets of plywood that are brand new, well, then you can put them here in the aisle and get to the job. And there's no need in driving around with a massive amount of storage for plywood, so this isn't that large. Down here is a spot for some some tables or some various other things that he had he had uh, in this specific size. So one thing to note real quick, I told him that a couple days prior to that to, to give me rectangular dimensions of all the stuff that you wanted to put in here. Go ahead and measure all of your stuff in a rectangular dimension. What is the, the length, the width, and the height of a volume of space that this could fit into and that's what we use to size all these components so this is plywood this is some staging tables then these are some other tools that he has underneath this side over here this long area right here the top part is being suspended right here this is a uh, a walk board eight foot walk board up here is for various pieces of trim and longer offcuts. This is kind of like a scrap bin on the go. 
And for what he does, for all of these random little odd jobs that he does, this is very important to him to have a location like this for oddball offcuts that uh, most other contractors would kind of throw away. He says if it's less than two feet, he throws it away, puts it in the burn pile, whatever. But, you know, four, five, six foot of, of trim and all kinds of other stuff, he can throw this up here and have ready access to it. Up here is another shelf. Uh, we did add another vertical divider that's not shown here and then a shelf on top. On this side over here is basically a wall of storage. There's, I think there is 29, 26 drawers completely. There's what, four, three, that's seven, that's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 drawers uh, to his specific sizes. Now he was under, we were making sure that as we dimension this out, now again, this is just the wireframe. So that 10 and a half inch opening is not gonna be a 10 and a half inch deep drawer because you have to consider the uh, drawer bottom and the drawer runners and making every, make sure everything lines up, all that good stuff. So uh, we came up with this wireframe model over here, all of the drawers and the top is cubby dividers, which has a bunch of cuts in a bunch of dados in here that quarter inch plywood can be slid across. So this took five hours or so to get to this stage on the first day. The next day, which wasn't a consecutive next day, it was actually a few days later, I turned all that into the final design, which is this. And we can see it around here. Oh, also, I didn't mention uh, this short wall over here. Access from this side door is the whole wall of cis-stainers, or view-tainers, I should say, view-tainers. And... Yeah, that's just a basic shelving unit, nothing fancy there. So here's the, the final design over here. All of these cutouts that I added were simply to reduce weight. These cutouts in here were for him to fish his hands through and find some stuff, but most of these other cutouts were to reduce weight. Uh, this ended up being 25 full sheets of plywood, something like that. Most of it half inch, and it's all pine plywood. So how did I get here? I'm going to walk you through the process of basically turning one of these wireframes into a cabinet, and then we'll talk about the cabinet itself. So if I quickly go to my next scene that I already have set up, and I'll hide all this stuff, because my thinking is this is modular. This is one cabinet over here I'll hide, and then all three of these are identical. They're just screwed together, right? Uh, one thing that I I did end up doing is my original plan was to make these sides all the way up to the top this all one solid side piece and have these dividers integrated but as far as manufacturing on the CNC machine it made much more sense to make the cabinets just the drawers and then have this top cubby section sit on top so with my wireframe I'll hide these others and I can turn this wireframe into a model quickly and easily. I'm just going to run through this. It's probably going to be too fast for a lot of people, but uh, what I would do is I would copy one over here and I would right click and say, make unique. That way I don't screw this one up because of this one, all I want is the wireframe. So I'll click and delete all of these faces real fast. I don't want any faces. I just want the wireframe around it because that's going to give me endpoints to stick to. Now also, I don't need any of this top because like I said, that's going to be a second section that I set on top. Let's go to a top-down view. Let's see, top-down view, and I can delete all of these lines and faces all at once. And there we go. Let's go back to this view. So this is the wireframe that I can build on. And like I said, I'm just gonna run through it real fast. All your dimensions are here for the perimeter. So I can right-click, I'm sorry, R for rectangle from this bottom right corner to this top left, P for push-pull, and pull this out by point four seven inches this is half inch plywood which is 23 30 seconds and that is 0.46 and some change something like that 0.47 inches works great for mortise and tenon joinery on the cnc machine so let's grab this and let's triple click g for component enter let's throw some color on it just so i can easily distinguish it from the background q for rotate and now i'm going to rotate this right into the front 90 degrees what that does is it puts that front face uh, in line with all of these lines so I can use this for setting up my mortise and tenon joint. So if I reference back over to modules, you'll see that each one of these drawers, if I pull this all the way out, has a runner 
and the drawer rides on that runner. The runner itself is mortise and tenon into the side. If I drop the second color on there, you can see how that works. There's mortise and tenon joints from these runners into the sides all the way down. Every one of these cabinets are just like that. So if I hide all of this, hide that side, you'll see that these taller cabinets are like that as well minus the bottom sections. These drawers were so large that we decided to go with full extension drawer slides for those. So lots and lots and lots of mortise and tenon joints. So to do those, my lines are already here. I can edit this part, T for tape measure. Let's come in by 1.5 inches. Let's come in by 1.5 inches. R for rectangle. And like I said, we're only doing these, this top section. So let's go in this direction. And let's see, the lower, light, lower right hand corner shows my dimensions. The first one is the longer of the two. So let's go with two comma 0.47 enter. That gives me this mortise right there. M for move, control brings up copy. I'll copy one over to here and then I'll press divided by two to give me three symmetrical mortises on this panel. I no longer need these guidelines left and right. Those are distracting, I'll get rid of them. I can select the mortises, M for move, control brings up copy. And I'll go from this end point up to here and I know the spacing is even so I can press X3 to multiply what I just did by three and there we go. So now my mortises are there but the, here's, a, here's a quick little trip, tip for you. I can P4 push pull and pull this back 0.47 inches enter and get rid of it and then double click to go through all of those. Sometimes that's a little time consuming when you have say 30 or 40 of those to do. So here's one thing that you can do. You can go to, let's go with a top down view. So now I can select just the thickness of my material minus the front face. This is outside of the wireframe. So this is the front face. I'm selecting the back and the sides and the top and the bottom. Delete it. Uh, some of you are thinking that's kind of crazy. Why would you just delete something that you just, uh, you know, made into a you know component for the thickness? The reason being is it's much easier to spacebar, triple click to select everything, hold shift to double click to deselect what I just had over there. And that leaves me with just the area selected. Delete that, P for push pull and to push this back 0.47 inches. So just a little work around to know your selections as far as push pulling and which is faster, which is, which is easier. So now that I have one side done, I can rotate this back into place. M4 move, control brings up copy. They are symmetrical, so they go right there. So you can see how this gets built pretty quickly. And from that same concept, uh, I can start putting stuff inside one another. So uh, R for rectangle, let's just go from here to here. And the first dimension is the longer of the two, I'll leave that. And I'll change the second one only by pressing comma four enter. So that's four inches wide, P for push pull. I'll push this down 0.47 inches for the thickness, space bar, triple click. Actually, no, not yet. I still need to make the joinery real quick. Let's just say that, um, let's go to this side over here so I can see it a little bit better without this being in my way. Uh, I want to make a pair of, of box joints, basically. I, I don't know what you'd really call this. Uh, so let's draw a rectangle right there. Dimensions say that the first one is the uh, longer of the two. So I'll press 1.5 comma enter to modify that. Now I want to center this perfectly. So M for move from this midpoint and I'll press R for right, uh, R, I'm sorry, right for red to constrain to the red and I'll drop it off at the midpoint back here. So now that I know that's perfectly centered. Now that it is selected, M for move, control brings up copy, copy it into the back. And what I can do is grab this push it back by 0.47 inches and go to this side and push this one back to that point, 0.47 inches. Basically what I'm doing is drawing box joints onto the pieces, space bar, triple click, G for component, enter, so that I can trace them on everything else. Now I can get this side piece, R for rectangle, and I'll just draw these two rectangles real fast. P for push pull, whoops, other direction. And there we go. So now I have a box joint that'll be cut out perfectly on the CNC machine. I can hide this and you can see the difference right there. That's, that's the two pieces of the box joint. So this is, the, this is the joinery for the entire build. Box joints right here on edges and then mortise and tenon joints in the middle. That's the, that's the joinery for absolutely everything and that's the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of that. 
so I don't get confused, go back to my modules scene, and that whole theme is, is continued all the way along. As you see, there's a front and a back on top. The back pieces have two back pieces, and then the bottom of each cabinet has two bottom pieces. So individually, this is kind of flimsy. There's not much, not much there to prevent racking. So I wouldn't trust this for like a bedroom dresser. Uh, you bump into the side and the front, it's probably going to rack quite a bit and you do it enough, it's probably going to break something. But when you consider all of these screwed together, all of these screwed to the wall in the back, you'll have a lot, a lot of rigidity without having to have a face frame and without having to have a solid back panel. So let's talk about the drawers really quick. Uh, the different colors here designate different size drawers. This red drawer is one that's gonna be doubled up with uh, full extension slides for pretty darn heavy stuff. This one's basically gonna be uh, super heavy stuff. These purple ones are ind individual drawers for uh, heavier stuff, but they need full extension slides. And then all of these other drawers are not that heavy of stuff so it's just going to be uh, wood on wood which isn't that bad at all so the way i make all of these is uh, the the drawer runner i'll drop a different color on it so you can see the drawer runner itself has three tenons that go into those mortises that we that i showed you a second ago so if i hide this you'll see that the three tenons stick out and after the cnc machine cuts it uh, or after it's cut out they literally just clip together a little bit of glue, a clamp, some brad nails, you're done. Assembly is incredibly fast with this style of construction. So for the drawers, what I do is I extend the drawer front down by the thickness of the plywood so it stops right here on the slides. That way, no matter what, even if there's, uh, basically no matter what, the front of the drawers are in line with the front of the cases. I did not add these circles for the drawer poles because in SketchUp it creates um, in SketchUp it creates a bunch of segments for the circle rather than arcs. So I just put crosshairs here and then I add the circles in uh, in, in my CAM software VCarve. So the drawers themselves are pretty pretty darn simple. Let's select everything. Hold Shift to deselect this. Everything else is selected. H4 hide and we can focus on one drawer. It's the exact same concept as the case. It's box joints everywhere. The bottom is box joint jointed jointed into the sides and then the back, but the bottom is actually mortise and tenon into the front. Now it's important in my opinion to make sure that the sides have two fingers on this connection and then the front only has one finger on this connection. The reason being is you're gonna have, this is gonna be glued together, but we are gonna have brad nails uh, being fired through, this, through the joint in all directions. And if you think about this, if you put two brad nails here, two brad nails here, that's four brad nails perpendicular to the travel direction, which is much greater than if we flip this around and only put two in this middle one, you only have two in this one uh, in that direction. So the brad nails are gonna add theoretically some uh, strength as far as this front panel being pulled off. Uh, that's the thinking anyway. And then all of the drawers, as I swat a fly in front of me, sorry, all of the drawers are uh, built the exact same way. They're just sized slightly different. Now on, on the, the drawer fronts on these larger drawers, if I select everything minus this drawer, uh, this one, the drawer fronts don't have mortises on them. They're, they're, all four sides are built the exact same way. And this is like big kid, big kid Legos. Everything just clips together. It's pretty darn satisfying watching all this stuff come together. So that's how I did these, these drawers, basically, these cabinets. And then uh, these, these cubbies go on top. So I, I took these boards here and I just used the CNC machine to cut all of these dados uh, and then you just stack them with horizontal or vertical dividers, put a back panel on it and the back panel massively stiffens all of this up and there you go. Um, that's going to be much easier to set in on top. This other side was kind of very specific. There's no joinery on this side. There's no CNC box joints. There's, there's no no joinery of any kind. It's all just butt joints with pocket hole screws. This is all. This will all get bolted to the wall, 
and that's all that's necessary. There, there's no need to go crazy with uh, specific joinery on this side. So that's basically it for the design. Uh, we, we took, or I took, I forget exactly, eight to 10 hours, something like that, to turn the wireframe into all of this. But I also, during that time, took it a step further and made a layout. So I broke down every single part onto the sheets. And I know you can import all this stuff into VCarve and have it nest it for you, but you lose, you lose a little bit of, of um, specifics. I, I wanna be able to have full control over this. So it didn't take me much time and effort at all to lay all this stuff out flat in the orientation that I wanted it to be laid out. And then also something to consider if uh, with a job like this, I'm going to be running the CNC machine, cutting all of this stuff out. I'm not really going to be assembling much at all. So the other people need to be working while the CNC machine is cutting. So if the CNC machine scatters all, or I'm sorry, if VCarve, the, the nesting software scatters all the parts on all the different machines uh, of the sheets to maximize efficiency, which is great most of the time, it may also scatter the parts to where it slows down the assembly because you don't have all of the components to complete your specific subassembly, if that makes sense. So I laid all this stuff out. This is all of the, all of the sheets. Uh, this one actually went yellow. We ended up going half inch on this one. So all of these sections right here plus this one are half inch plywood. This green one over here is quarter inch plywood and all of these are three quarter inch plywood. And from there, I, I deleted all the 3D geometry for 2D geometry and imported all this on a layer in VCarve. So that's just kind of the way that I did it to get the most amount of control. Uh, and then of course, in VCarve, you have to go through and, and add dog bones to all this stuff, uh, which there is a gadget for that. But anyway, I thought that would be an interesting video to walk you through how I go from wireframe to actual uh, sketch up design and, and also the reason behind it like I said there's no need for him to the contractor to sit there with his notes and watch me spend a little bit more time getting all this stuff done uh, when we can simply focus on the basics the wireframe model everything that I do in SketchUp starts with a wireframe model if I'm building a dining table I've already got a predetermined pre notion of of the overall size that I want to have this table to be and I'll create a a 3D wireframe that I can work inside of so I know that I'm always constrained to those particular dimensions. Uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped. If you are interested in uh, purchasing the, the VCAR file for all of the CNC stuff for this, as well as this SketchUp model, I'll have all of this for sale on my website. You guys take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.